inspection and final once-over sets the stage for a day of testing at the Glen L. Martin Wind Tunnel, located at the University of Maryland. This 3 8 scale model car, which is securely bolted down, will soon be put through the ringer. As the staff turns on the fan controls and begins to collect data, this diminutive car endures wind speeds of over 100 miles per hour. And while you can't see the wind, you sure can hear it. At the other end of this hollow tube is a powerful fan that creates the flow of air inside the tunnel. Just standing here gives you an idea of how large this fan is, 19 feet in diameter. And when the wind tunnel is operational, it performs like an airplane propeller, pushing the air through. As the fan slowly picks up speed, these turning vanes guide that air into a settling chamber that's just upstream of the test area. Every wind tunnel that's designed for vehicle testing that's worth its salt will have that characteristic. Most of the major automakers have their own state-of-the-art wind tunnels that can test full-size vehicles. Their research includes ways to reduce drag, improve fuel efficiency, and minimize wind noise. The noise that you hear when you're riding in your car is a much more complex total problem. Dr. Jewel Barlow says for the past few decades, this low-speed wind tunnel has been used to test automobile aerodynamics on a number of concept and production cars. But their lobby tells an even bigger story, with scale models of seaplanes dating back to the 1950s and yacht keels from the America's Cup yachts. We say almost anything that moves in air or water, we've probably done some work on it. And most of that work, says Barlow, involves helping companies improve product design and validate mathematical modeling. Given the specific objectives of the company for that car, how do you fine tune the final shape details to make it match the market segment they want to address? For example, the scale model being tested today is the G2 from Genovation Cars. At Genovation, we are interested in shifting how Americans view and use energy. They're a Maryland-based technology company that's trying to build a truly innovative electric car. So we designed the, the G2, the Genovation G2, to be um, green in content as well as very, very efficient. Genovation has been using the wind tunnel to test the aerodynamic characteristics of their car. And so we knew the car was, was very efficient through the wind, had a very low CD of, uh, it was a 0.2. And, and decent downforce, but you really need to have a model in the wind tunnel to validate your computer model and make sure you got it right. A better visual of the airflow around a car is the smoke demo. One of the things that you're looking for is where the stagnation point is. As you can see, the smoke flows pretty evenly over the top of the car, but watch how it separates and becomes turbulent towards the back. Barlow says to minimize drag, you want to have the separated flow at the back of the car as small as you can get it. Because that's the whole goal. That's, that's, that represents the big goal as far as drag is concerned. Genovation CEO Andrew Saul tells me they increased the angle of their bumper cover underneath the car and added a chrome lip to the back to help reduce drag. It's these kinds of subtle design changes that make wind tunnel testing a crucial part of vehicle design and development for car companies both big and small.